Okay, so this section is about ionising radiation, and there's a certain part of the EM spectrum that this concerns. So, remember last time we talked about the EM spectrum, the seven types of wave that are all very similar in terms of, well, they have the same speed, they have some of the same properties, they're a family of waves, but they've got different properties as well, because they have different wavelengths and frequencies. We said that the wavelength increased as we went from gamma to radio, and that the frequency increased as we went from radio to gamma, and the important thing to remember was that the energy also increased as we went from radio to gamma waves, which means gamma have got the most energy and radio have got the least. Now, ionising radiation is the most energetic radiation, and that means that it has to be on this half, the higher half of the EM spectrum to be counted. And what we actually count as ionising radiation are these three, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma. Now, I and ultraviolet is the least ionising, and we'll work out what that means in a second, and gamma is the most ionising. So, what does ionising actually mean? Okay, well, to do that, we have to think about an atom. Now, an atom is made of a positive nucleus, which has got protons and neutrons in, and it's surrounded by negative electrons. Now, an atom is neutral. It's got the same number of protons and, ele uh, protons and electrons. An ion is charged, and that's because it has more protons or more electrons. It depends. It's got an unequal number. Now, if I think about my normal atom, this is an atom for now, atom. Okay. If I then imagine some radiation coming along, say a photon, and it comes along here, moving along, moving along, moving along, moving along, and it hits this electron. If it has enough energy, it can knock that electron out of the atom. Now once that electron's out of the atom, there are now more protons than electrons in the atom. So the atom has become an ion because it's now charged. Now, ionising radiation has enough energy to knock electrons out of atoms. If you understand that, that's all you need to know. Now, that can damage things for certain reasons, and we'll think about why that can damage things in a second. So, ionising radiation has enough energy to knock electrons out of an atom and then turn them into ions. So why is it so dangerous? So if I think about my EM radiation, my ionising radiation hitting a cell, cells are made of atoms. Okay? Inside a cell there is DNA, which is then made of atoms. If some of that ionising radiation damages an atom in DNA, so I have got here some damage, by removing an electron, so it's damaged an atom in the DNA, when it replicates, it will replicate, that's a pen doesn't work very well, it will replicate, when the cell replicates, replicate wrongly with damage still. Okay, so when it replicates completely just replicates identically, it doesn't heal itself. Now if that carries on happening, we end up it can be this can make a cancerous cell. Okay, so if we damage DNA it can make a cancerous cell. So when it replicates, the definition of a tumor is a cell that replicates a damaged cell that replicates and it's out of control. So this cell, when it replicates, can then lead on to a tumour, which can then lead on to cancer. It doesn't mean that if you ever go anywhere near any radiation, because we're exposed to it all the time, you're going to damage DNA and get a cancer cell, and get a cancer cell, get a tumour that's got cancer. It just means that this is why it can happen, and there's a chance of that happening. So that's why ionising radiation is so dangerous, because it can damage cells, because it can damage DNA, and that can eventually lead to, unfortunately, things such as cancer. So there's three types of ionising radiation we talked about. The first two are gamma rays and x-rays. Now, the things you need to know about that they're used for is that although they can be dangerous, they can be really useful because we can use them in medicine. You can't really see these pictures very well. We can use them in medicine to do certain tasks. So, gamma rays can be used to kill cancer cells. Because they can damage cells, they can kill cancer cells. So they can cause cancer, but they can also kill cancer. Okay? They can also, that's, this is called radiotherapy. You might have heard people having radiotherapy after chemotherapy or instead of. That's gamma rays killing cancer cells. They send it to the, um, the place of the cancer and kill the cells there. They can also be used in medical imaging. So you can use a gamma camera to image inside your body. So they can be useful. The other and probably more obvious use of um, ionising radiation is for x-rays. So x-rays are basically photographs but done with x-rays. So you can see here 
an x-ray of a man with a spear through his skull, which I thought was quite interesting. So x-rays, they are obviously, if you think about this, an x-ray film is white and it turns black if an x-ray hits it. So you can see from here that the x-ray has definitely gone through skin, so it's transmitted, so I transmit by skin. It's transmitted by skin, okay? Now, it doesn't go through bone, and that's why you get an outline. So it's absorbed by bone. And then finally, the metal sphere here, that's because it's been reflected by metal. Okay? So the main ones that you need to know about were x-rays, or obviously there's a bit of a risk because they are ionising radiation, so they could affect you, but they're worth it. So if you think you've broken your bone, it's worth kind of a small risk of maybe maybe, maybe, maybe getting a cell that is damaged to find out whether you've actually broken a bone that needs to be healed. And if it isn't healed, then you'll get much more complications later on. So x-rays are the second type of ionising radiation that can be used for medical purposes. Okay? Now, we know that you shouldn't take them if you're pregnant, and that's because babies or fetuses are much more prone to them and the damage that they can do. Okay, but for both of these, we have to think about how the risk is reduced during these medical procedures. So, for well, first things first, you only have a short exposure time as possible. So, you wouldn't have an x-ray um, for like four hours exposure time. You'd have it as quickly as possible. So, you're only exposed to the x-rays or the gamma rays as quick uh, for as short a time as you need to be. Um, also, if you're a if you're working in a hospital doing that kind of thing, you'll wear protective clothing, okay? So you'll often see that X-ray and gamma ray or gamma camera operators, they wear gloves, they wear something called iron aprons. So their aprons have got iron in them, and that means that the X-rays and the gamma rays are going to be much harder for them to get through. Okay, not iron, sorry, lead aprons. Um, also, you don't have unnecessary ones. So if they weren't... Well, they used to um, use x-rays to look at your feet in, in shoe shops and to see the uh, bones in your feet. But they've decided now, obviously, it's not really necessary to do that. You don't need to see your bones of your feet to work out what shoes you should wear, what size you are. So they don't do that anymore. So no, we now have no unnecessary um, exposure. Okay, so this kind of thing means that we're much safer. We're reducing the risk. There's a risk, but the risk is worth taking. You'd rather know if you broken your leg than not. If you've got cancer, you'd rather kill the cancer cells and risk the tiny little risk of extra damage than let them live and not kill them. Okay? So, the final thing we need to look at, I think it's the final one, let me just check. Yep, there we go, is UV light. Now, UV light is the least ionising of the three ionising radiations, so it can be seen as the least dangerous, but it's still quite dangerous, okay? So, UV light So there's two types of UV light, okay? There's UVA and UVB. Now, both of these are ionising. One's more harmful than the other. Now, UVB rays, they're the most dangerous, okay? They cause skin cancer. Well, not skin cancer, I should change that, sorry. They cause sunburn. Okay? And UVA are still not that good, but they're slightly less dangerous. They cause... Things like uh, wrinkles and kind of sun damage to skin. Okay, more permanent damage, but UVB is more dangerous because it can be really severe sunburn. Now, we've said there that UV causes, UVB causes sunburn. If I, didn't, if I wasn't exposed to UV light, I would not get um, sunburn. So here, exposure to UV light is the cause of sunburn. Okay, it's the cause of sunburn. However, sunburn and skin cancer... Skin cancer, you can get it in other ways. It's the only way to get skin cancer is not through sunburn, but it is one factor. So sunburn is a factor um, for skin cancer. And that means that UV light is a factor of skin cancer. So UV light causes sunburn, but because sunburn isn't the only way that you can get skin cancer, there are other reasons. It can just appear on its own naturally, that kind of thing. UV light is just a factor for skin cancer. Now we can protect ourselves against UV light in certain ways, and the atmosphere does a bit for us. So the first one, the most obvious one that we all probably know, is using sunscreen. So sun cream, or sunscreen, or suntan lotion as I call it, can either do two things. So you have your skin there, and you put your layer of sunscreen on top. Okay. Now it can either absorb UV rays, which stops, 
or it can reflect them. So we can either bounce off or be absorbed. Either way, it stops it getting through to the skin underneath. Okay, so sun cream either absorbs or reflects UV light. The other thing that we have is the ozone layer. Okay, the ozone layer is not to do with global warming, as everyone seems to think. The ozone layer is a layer of O3. So ozone is a special type of oxygen, oxygen with three atoms in it. And it's really thin, and it's about 10 kilometers up, as you can see from this diagram here. It's between the troposphere and the stratosphere. Now, the ozone layer has a special ability that it absorbs UVB, the ozone layer. It lets through some UVA. So UVB going through, if I kind of draw a, a diagram, you'll get a little bit. So this will be UVB. So there's loads to start with, and then it's decreased by the ozone layer. UVA, it doesn't do as much for. So UVA, it's kind of, you know, a little bit decreased, but not much. There we go. So the ozone layer doesn't stop UVA. Now the problem, you've all heard probably about the hole in the ozone layer, and that's due to CFCs. So hole is due to CFCs being used. And they're chlorofluorocarbons, they're a type of chemical. And they're used a lot in aerosols like deodorants and also in a lot of fridges in about 20, 20 years ago. And that's caused a hole about the size of Australia to form over Australia, okay? And that means that over Australia, there's no protection from UVB rays. And the cases of skin cancer have gone up massively because of that. Now, it's not to do, remember, with carbon, the global warming, but it is one of the problems that we've got because, our, because of us changing our environment. So the ozone layer is the second way. We can protect ourselves from UV light by using sunscreen, and also the Earth does it naturally with the ozone layer. So that's everything you really need to know about ionising radiation. We're next going to go on to radiation that heats things up. So I hope that was helpful.